Welcome back to Farage with me, Richard Tice, and my special guest on his own show, Nigel Farage, is still with us. We need to talk about international student visas because they are a huge part of the dramatic increase in the lawful immigration numbers. And I've got a graph, hopefully, that will just show that coming up on the screen. Until about 2019, the sort of numbers that, of international students coming in was about 200,000 every year. That number has now increased in the last 12 months to 500,000 students, and you can see it there, that's just the students over the last uh, about decade. And then on top of that, there was another 150,000 dependents. The government tell us they're going to deal with the dependents, but they're very proud of the student numbers. And many might say, well, what's wrong with that? Well, the rules are that having done a degree here or a master's here, you can then stay for two years on a graduate working visa, and that qualifies you to do a then get a five-year skilled worker visa. You're basically there for life. Now, the Home Office immigration rules are quite, quite clear with regard to international student visas. It says that the university that you are going to is essentially a sponsor. And the rules of sponsorship are this, that the course of study must take place on the premises of the student sponsor, unless it's, for example, a temporary relief if you're going on a field trip or something. And the Home Office requires the sponsors to comply with this as set out in the sponsor guidance. This is really, really important because what we've discovered actually is that that is not happening. Now, you can understand it during COVID when everybody was at home or having to be online. But since then, since then, a number of separate studies have shown that actually the vast majority of courses now, a significant percentage or indeed up to 100% is either still online or uh, actually, you can do it online. So you don't have to go to any seminars, you don't have to go to any lectures whatsoever. And there's an entity called the, the HEPI Student Academic Experience Survey 2023, which has just been published, shows that 75% of students stated that between 10% and 100% of the lectures were online. 60% said that the same figure, up to 100% of seminars were online. So do you see what's happening here? The very premise of the Home Office student visa obligation is clearly being breached. In fact, you barely need to come at all. You get your visa and you could be somewhere else in the world. Well, I'm delighted to be joined by my first guest to discuss this, Dr. Mike Jones of Migration Watch. Um, Mike, a very good evening. Thanks for this. This is really significant because I believe that knowingly the universities and the Home Office are basically turning a blind eye to this blatant abuse of the rules and regulations. Oh, I absolutely agree. I mean, the, the, the promise of Brexit was to take back control. But essentially what's happened is the Home Office has outsourced control of the student visa system to the universities, which is like putting Count Dracula in charge of the blood transfusion service. I mean, essentially the Department for Education has no interest in enforcing these rules and regulations, and the universities are quite happy to take advantage of this bureaucratic indifference. Uh, it's extraordinary. Now, some will say, and many in the government say, and, and elsewhere, well, this is fantastic, uh, international education, it's, it's a great export, and we should, the, the more the merrier, and what's wrong with doing online? What are your thoughts to that, Mike, to those who, who take that approach? Well, don't get me wrong, um, many of the international students deserve to be here. Um, I'm glad they are here. They study at elite universities. They contribute to campus culture and the research community. But um, there's a point of diminishing returns here. You know, as you pointed out, Richard, the number of student visas is just shy of 500,000. When I graduated in 2005, that number was about 200,000. Many of these students I'm afraid to say, are propping up substandard institutions that offer Mickey Mouse courses. Uh, and that in itself is really significant. Um, should we be, 
Should we really worry about this, or actually, do we just take the view the more money, the better? Or actually, is the floor, Mike? If, for example, you didn't automatically qualify for a graduate working visa to stay here after the degree, then actually maybe it would be much less of a problem. Yeah, that would certainly make a difference. But at the end of the day, you need a cap on student visas. You've got to remember that the higher education sector are a vested interest group. Um, universities will keep the pedals of the metal on the numbers because it enriches their coffers. But of course, the costs of immigration are dispersed in terms of higher house prices, higher rents, pressure on public infrastructure. All the pressure transport. on public services, exactly, which Nigel mentioned earlier. Mike, thank you so much indeed for your thoughts on that. Now, we did approach the government for a comment on this. A government spokesman said during the pandemic, concessions were made to allow visas to be granted to overseas students undertaking remote learning in certain circumstances. Ah. We are updating our policy in this area and we'll provide further information in due course. Well, I should keep a very close eye on what due course is. We did also ask the student sort of application service called UCAS uh, for a comment on this. They declined. We asked Universities UK for a comment on this. They haven't responded. And the Office for Students also declined to comment. Well, Nigel, your thoughts mm. on this? Uh, Am I right on this? Or actually, is the government right saying it's a great export? What's the problem? Well, first things first, great piece of work. You know, you've exposed that the rules are not being applied, that no one seems to really care. And I find the context interesting because a number of senior Labour and Conservative figures have been arguing now for a couple of years that we should actually take student numbers out of the immigration figures completely, which is very, very interesting. Uh, you made the dependence point very quickly. I'm sorry, I'm not sure why any student should be allowed to bring any dependents to come and permanently settle in Britain. I didn't take my, at all. I didn't take my girlfriend up to Manchester when I went. <laughs> I mean, well, you might have done, but, 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 but that is absolutely ridiculous. No, you've uncovered something here, and as you say, once they've graduated, you stay for a couple of years, you get a job, you then get permanent leave to remain. Look, the, our universities appear to be obsessed by money. Whether it's money coming from foreign students, grants from Chinese companies linked directly to the Chinese government, there's too much of it going on. Yes, in many ways it is a great export for us. It does bring money into the country, but effectively it's becoming a backdoor route to mass immigration. So actually my suggestion, if the government said, well, we're going to stop the graduate working visa as an automatic right, yep. post-degree or post-masters, yep then actually you could say online courses is an even better export around the world if, if our universities are that good. That yeah, well, I mean, you know, they could sign up for a British course and do it from wherever they live in the yeah. world, couldn't they? So, look, you know, of course, you know, we want, we want people to spend money in our country, but I just think this is being abused wholesale, and the fact you've got that sort of weasel answer from the government, you know. They've only said that because you've exposed the fact that actually a coach and horses is being driven through this. But it's at every level, and I think what we have to understand is that those in London that run the Home Office, in our elite universities, in our government and opposition, they are entirely unconcerned by the exploding population in Britain. Completely unconcerned. And the impact of that on people's lives is not just being felt, but I think increasingly this is going to be the issue that dominates not just the next general election, but years to come. And of course, whilst you're away, the government came up with a new five-point plan on reducing the numbers. They said they were going to reduce them by 300,000. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that's their stance. I'm, so, I'm, Richard, I'm sorry. Right I'm sorry. The 2010 manifesto will reduce net migration to tens of thousands a year. They said it again in 2015, again in 2017. They paid lip service to it in 2019. And you actually realise they never, ever meant any of it. They've been getting away with telling the British public what they think the public wants to hear without ever intending to deliver it. I mean, it's not very far away from lying to people. It'll be very interesting what the latest polling numbers say on that. Nigel, great to see you Thank in the you. studio. Thank you for allowing me to share. No, well, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted. The chair. I'm delighted, and I'll be back um, where you are on Monday Absolutely. evening. Well, it's, well. It's, been, uh, it's been really good fun, and uh, you've done so well. Absolutely fantastic. So, coming up, folks, after...